Hi everybody, this is Acer Baez from Yade making another video for you guys in YouTube. Uh, this video is called Too Many Orishas or Why Have Too Many Orishas. So this video comes from uh, multiple questions that's, you know, that people ask me and that people have asked me as to uh, why do I have so many Orishas or how do I deal with so many Orishas when they themselves can't deal with the ones that they have received. So um, let me tell you guys something. First of all, there's no such thing as too many Orishas. In my opinion, in my world, in, in my existence, there's no such thing as, too, uh, as having too many Orishas, okay? There's only more Orishas that need to be had, that need to be received. Um, this question comes because a lot of people don't know what to do with their Orishas. Like a lot of people who initiate themselves, who, who are initiated themselves, don't know what to do with their Orishas or they don't know how to tend them properly or they feel that they're not doing it right, etc., etc. First of all, let me tell you guys something. Your godparent is at your godparent is supposed to teach you how to tend Orisha and what to do with Orisha and guide you into Orisha, okay? If your godparent is not able to do it for whatever reason or they, they themselves don't know, then you need to find somewhere else, something else, someone else that can help you out. But there's no such thing as too many Orishas. When you initiate into Lukumi, into the uh, Cuban African religion, which is the tradition is called Lukumi, when you initiate into Lukumi, Depending on who your ruling Orisha is, you go in, you initiate with a certain number of Orishas that walk with you from that point forward, besides any others that you may have to receive later on in life. Um, tending the Orisha is not something that should be looked upon as a, as a duty or as a... Um, as a must. It is something that, that needs to be done and looked at as a lovable experience and as a religious and spiritual experience when you're tending the Orisha. Also, I want to say there's no such thing as hard tendings. Tending Orisha is very simple. Excuse me, it's very simple. Then the Orisha can be very complicated or it can be very simple, it can be in the middle, okay? Then the Orisha can be anything from just simply saying good morning. For example, every single morning I do, I have a ritual in the mornings of, that I call awakening the temple. Awakening the temple is when I salute all of my spirits and I salute everybody and I salute the spirits that are outside, the spirits that are inside, the Egun, the Orisha, everything, everybody. Everything that I work with, Hindu deities, etc. Now, if if you have your temple set up, if you have your home temple set up, it is only nice, the same way that you wake up and you say hello to your partner or to your family members or to your co-workers, etc. It's the same way that you wake up and you say hello to your deities. That is attending in itself and it's very simple. You can do it, you can prostrate and, and salute and say muyubas and all those things, or you can just simply open the door and say hello, good morning, how's everybody, blessings, etc., etc., which is something that I do if I'm in a hurry or whatnot. If I'm not in a hurry, then what I tend to do, which I would, which is one of the recommendations I'm going to do, is every day you salute a different orisha formally. So, for example, today you'll salute Elegua, and then tomorrow you salute Obatalain, and the next day you salute Ochu, and the next day you salute Yemaya, etc., etc. But every day you should wake up and come up to your Orishas. If you have whatever Orishas that you have, come up to them and say hello, good morning, how are you? Just have an interactive conversation. Don't make it so complicated because it doesn't need to be complicated, you guys, okay? But it should come from your heart. Everything should always come from your heart. Everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you give should always come from your heart. And with a sense of love, not a sense of responsibility. Like this is if you if you're looking at it and like I have to do this because if not I'm gonna anger the Orisha, then you're looking at it wrong. The Orisha is not gonna get angry at you because you didn't say hello one day, and you you know, or something like that. The Orisha is not even going to be bothered by anything like that. But it's nice, and it's and it's um, 
and it creates a bond between you and the Orisha to say hello and to say good morning and at night time you can say good night. This is something that I do every single day. In the mornings I always say good morning. I do I do a water prayer or an omitutu prayer at the front door. I salute the sun. I salute the spirits. I say good morning to Ochu. I say good morning to everybody. And then at night time before I go to bed before I go into my bedroom, I say good night to everybody and I just open the door very quickly and I say good night everybody, thanks for a beautiful day. I usually give a kiss to Ochun and I call it a night. So very simple rituals that are not complicated. So whatever amount of Orishas that you do have, every Orisha has its own particular ways that they like to be tended personally. But as a, as a, as a unit, there's very easy ways of tending Orisha. Another thing that you can do that I also do, I don't have a candle with me right now, but another thing that you can do is walk into your Orishas or stand in front of your Orishas with a white candle. We're gonna pretend this is a candle, okay? This is a bottle of Omiero. We're gonna pretend that this is a candle. I'm not gonna like this. So we're gonna pretend that this is a candle. You're gonna walk up to your Orishas and you just simply give light. You, you say something from your heart and you just pray and you say So you ask for the blessings of your spirits, of the Yegons, of, of all your family members who are dead, of Eshu, of, of all the Orishas that are present in the house, all the Orishas that are present in heaven that are not in your house at that moment. Pray for your, ask for the blessing of your godfather or your godmother, your yubon, your bona, your, your other members of your ile who are also initiated. Pray for everybody who is not initiated. Pray for everybody who is around you, your friends, your enemies, your lovers, etc., etc. Pray from your heart. Always pray from your heart and always say things that are meaningful to you. Remember that every time you approach Orisha, Orisha is already aware of why you're approaching them and what you really are seeking out of approaching the Orisha, okay? So don't make it more complicated than it already is. The religion is complicated, the religion is simple, the original, the, the religion is intermediate. It's a mixture of everything depending on the day, the situation, and what's happening and what you are personally doing. Um, another reason why I have so many Orishas, for example, or why, <clears throat> why so many people like me receive many Orishas is, one, uh, it could have been marked in a reading. When you initiate, and if you're watching my videos, people, and you like Orisha, you have to initiate. There's no way around it. You have to initiate. And I'm going to do a video specifically on why you should initiate. But when you initiate and you have your Itab read to you and, and your signs are pulled out and everything for the rest of your life is marked, Orisha may mark you there to have to receive a particular Orisha, one or two more, three more, who knows how many more. Those are primary Orishas that you have to receive besides the Orishas that you went into initiation with. Okay? Now... A reading may mark you to receive Orisha, and Orisha may come down in procession and mark you to receive an Orisha. Um, depending on life needs and situations is why some other people receive Orishas. For example, when sometimes certain people, when they get very sick, they want to receive Babaluaye, uh, Sohano, or San Lazaro. They want to receive him for their health or this and that, or they might want to receive Inle or something like that. Now the issue with that is, this is something that a lot of people don't think about or haven't put two and two together. The people that give the argument, the people that give the argument that you should only receive Orishas at certain points of life, when you're sick or something, if you're sick in the hospital, it's very hard for you to pull the money to receive an Orisha. Like a Sohano, for example, who is very expensive. Right behind me, right there he is. Beautiful. Maferefum a Sohano every single day of my life. You cannot wait until you're sick to receive the Orisha. It might help, but it might become more dangerous for you. The point of receiving the Orisha is having the Orisha so that when you are sick, you can already do quickly a bowl on top of your own Orisha, okay? 
So life needs. So when people's health go bad, they, they might receive a, one orisha or another. When they're moving from one place to another, they might receive an orisha or another. When something drastic is happening in their life, when maybe they've gone to jail or something, so they try to receive an orisha or their family members try to birth an orisha or do something, it just depends. Life needs. It depends. Um, another reason, which is my main reason, is preservation of the faith and the religion. There are many Orishas who were not being worshipped as much in Cuba because of lack of people having the Orisha. So because of lack of things in Cuba, we're not in Cuba, we're not in Cuba, no estamos en Cuba, we're not in Cuba, we're here. Because of lack in Cuba, then the certain Orishas were lost or certain Orishas were just simply worshipped by very few people in the island, etc., etc. But we're not in Cuba, guys. So, preservation of the Orisha and the faith is there's many, many people out there like myself who receive many Orishas because they want to make sure that the cult of the Orisha um, continues and, and is prosperous. And that is love to the Orisha. That you develop when you initiate into this faith and you and you are called to this faith, like any other faith in this world, you're going to make your life revolve around that faith and you're gonna make your passion be that faith, etc. So to me, it is a pleasure to receive an Orisha. For, uh, it is a pleasure to do the ceremony, it's a pleasure to clean the Orisha, it's a pleasure to tend the Orisha, to look at the Orisha, just <clears throat> whatever it might be. Preservation means that you have the Orisha and you're willing and you're going to do your best to at least birth it at least once to somebody else, hopefully, so that the, the Orisha continues from you to someone else and then from that person on so that no Orisha worship is lost again or is, or is just simply lost, period. Um, so you can do, when you're tending your Orishas, depending on the amount of Orishas that you have, um, your, your your primary orishas from initiation plus any of the orishas you know you can pick things to do you can like I said on a daily basis you just say hello very quickly very nicely very politely and you continue on to work etc etc but at least once a week you definitely have time for at least once a week to tend at least one orisha and sit down open the sopera talk to the orisha touch the otas um, give an offering, uh, write a letter to them, I don't know, do something, light two candles to the Orisha, very simple. If you cannot do it once a week, I'm sure you can do it at least once a month. So it depends, it always depends and it always, there's, there, some people just have a lot of excuses and there's no such thing as an excuse, there's just not, there's just no willingness to do anything with the Orisha. If you love your Orisha and if you love the faith and the religion, you're going to find the time to tend to the Orisha. Cleaning the, the sopera, cleaning the batea, cleaning the, the vessel of the Orisha is a form of worship. Get a napkin and just simply go like this over it so it's not full of dust. That is a worship. While, you, while you're dusting the Orisha, you talk to the Orisha and you say hello and you say whatever and you pray and you pray and you pray and you talk about this and you talk about the other. The same way that I'm speaking to you guys is the same way that I speak to the Orisha. I sit there and I'll talk to them my ear off if I need to. So the same way that you confide, that you confide yourself with your secrets and things on, on one of your friends, do the same thing with the Orisha as you're cleaning the Orisha. It's very simple. Everybody has time for at least once a month to tend at least one orisha. There's no excuses there. Um, the more you work with the orisha, the more, the, the stronger the bond that you create. And by work, I mean personal work plus religious work. So not everybody, not everybody who initiates does public work. I do public work, some people don't. Um, not everybody has got children. Not everybody has to be birthing orishas. But everybody has the duty, and not the duty, but everybody should have the desire to connect with their orishas, especially at least with your lagbatori, with your main orisha of your head. Um, um, so the more that you work with them, the more that you pray, the more that you salute, the more that you tend, the closer you're going to begin to feel to the orisha and the fundamental. 
oh, excuse me, to the orishas and the fundamental and to the energy that you are working with, okay? So either if you're doing workings for yourself, a boss, etc., etc., or for yourself or for clients or for family members or whomever, that is a form of working with Yorisha. Do something more often. It doesn't need to be complicated, you guys. You also have to remember that not every Yorisha needs to be tended so often. Not every Yorisha likes to be touched very often. For example, Olokun is one of the Orishas that don't need to be tended so often or saluted every month or anything like that. So you can salute Olokun. If you're someone who doesn't birth a locum often, you can salute a locum once a month, you can salute it every other month, you can salute it uh, every six months, or like twice a year, um, or do something pretty and big for a locum once or twice a year. There's no excuses there, you guys, okay? Other orishas, like for example, Asohano. Baba Asohano. Asohano, I, I personally make it a point to tend, physically tend Asohano privately at least three times a year. Usually what I've done in the in the, the past, I've done in the beginning of the year, in the middle of the year, and towards the end of the year. That I do a physical tending of Asohano besides anything else I'm, I might do throughout the year with Asohano. But Asohano is an orisha that doesn't need to be tended. Three times a year can be a lot for Asohano. So once a year can be good, etc. Another orisha, for example, would be Yewa back here behind me. Yewa is an Orisha that once a year is more than enough for Yewa, if you have Yewa. So many people don't even want to receive Yewa because they have stigma towards Yewa, etc, etc. But there's no excuses, you guys. There's no such thing as too many Orishas. When you initiate and you go into the faith, you will go in with a certain amount of Orishas that is a very limited amount of Orishas, anywhere from 7 to like 9 or 10, 11 at most that you end up with receiving in your initiation and that's just basic basic orishas and 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 your your preliminary orishas and there's there's so many things that you can do with all of them that there's no need for you to feel overwhelmed with it so people feel overwhelmed with changing the water in certain orishas some people feel overwhelmed with cleaning the pot some people feel overwhelmed with all these things and i'm like how how do you feel overwhelmed with those things? There's, there's, it just makes no sense as to why you feel. You feel overwhelmed because you want to be doing something else. That's the truth. And don't come. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You feel overwhelmed because you want to do something else. And you have this duty. Or you feel like you have this duty that you have to do it. So it's like such a hassle to lift this lid and change the... No. Don't come at me with excuses. All of you who watch me on YouTube, all of you who message me, don't come at me with excuses of any of those things. If you love Orisha, it shouldn't be a hassle for you to clean your Orisha, light a candle to your Orisha, put a dimu to your Orisha, um, birth your Orisha, tend your Orisha. It's never a hassle. It's definitely not a hassle for me. It should never be a hassle for any of you who has less orishas than I have received. There's other people that I have met that have three times the amount of orishas that I have, and either either they they uh, don't tend the orisha so often, or they follow some of the things that I've mentioned to you guys, or they just simply tend the orisha like they normally would. So there's no such thing as having too many orishas. There's always an, an extra orisha that can fit into your house, into your bodu, into your ganastier, okay? So, please, send me your comments and your questions and whatnot. I want to hear how do you tend your orishas? What do you do? How often do you do it? Send me a comment, send me a message, make me a video and tag me on it, whichever way is easier for you. Um, please, remember, if you do not know what to do, and you would like to take a class, you can always message me for private classes on Orisha worship and how to attend Orisha and how to work with Orisha, etc., etc., for initiates and for non-initiates, okay? Um, send me your comments, your messages, your topics, etc., etc., everything, because I love interaction with everybody. Please remember that you can contact me through sweetonyidesigns at gmail.com or through Facebook by just simply searching Asiel Baez and you can send me a friend request and I will accept you and then you can just hit me up through there or through YouTube and send me a message or a comment etc and I will reply to it as, as soon as I possibly can. 
Um, besides that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Remember, there's no such thing as too many orishas. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in one of my next videos. Thank you all for watching me. Ache, 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 to. Hi everybody, this is Acer Baez from Yade making another video for you guys in YouTube. Uh, this video is called Too Many Orishas or Why Have Too Many Orishas. So this video comes from uh, multiple questions that's, you know, that people ask me and that people have asked me as to uh, why do I have so many Orishas or how do I deal with so many Orishas when they themselves can't deal with the ones that they have received? So, um, let me tell you guys something. First of all, there's no such thing as too many Orishas. In my opinion, in my world, in, in my existence, there's no such thing as, too, uh, as having too many Orishas, okay? There's only more auditions that need to be had, that need to be received. Um, this question comes because a lot of people don't know what to do with their auditions. Like a lot of people who initiate themselves, who, who are initiated themselves, don't know what to do with their auditions or they don't know how to tend them properly or they feel that they're not doing it right, etc., etc. First of all, let me tell you guys something. Your godparent is a your godparent is supposed to teach you how to tend Orisha and what to do with Orisha and guide you into Orisha, okay? If your godparent is not able to do it for whatever reason or they, they themselves don't know, then you need to find somewhere else, something else, someone else that can help you out. But there's no such thing as too many Orishas. When you initiate it as a must, it is something that, that needs to be done and looked at as a lovable experience and as a religious and spiritual experience when you're tending the Orisha. Also, I want to say there's no such thing as hard tendings. Tending Orisha is very simple. Excuse me, it's very simple. Tending Orisha can be very complicated or it can be very simple, it can be in the middle, okay? Tending the Orisha can be anything from just simply saying good morning. For example, every single morning I do, I have a ritual in the mornings of, that I call awakening the, into Lukumi, into the uh, Cuban African religion, which is the tradition is called Lukumi. When you initiate into Lukumi, depending on who your ruling Orisha is, you go in, you initiate with a certain number of Orishas that walk with you from that point forward besides any others that you may have to receive later on in life. Um, tending the Orisha is not something that should be looked upon as a, as a duty or as a, um, 